You know what else they say about my people? The polls. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. <laughs> when Donald J. Trump first said this infamous quote, many people just laughed it off. Sure, this was an out-of-pocket thing for a presidential candidate to say, but we all pretty much chalked it up to an inflated sense of self and just Trump being Trump. But as time has gone on, it seems like he might've been right about this statement and it's a little bit more accurate than anyone could have ever imagined. The last six years since the statement has been made have kind of been a blur. We have seen this overwhelming loyalty of the intense Trump supporters time and time again. When he swore he had the election stolen from him, his followers literally prepared themselves for a battle to defend him. They rode to the Capitol in masses and stormed the building in a way we're still talking about and holding trials for today. When Trump was raided at Mar-a-Lago for having stolen classified documents, many of them didn't even seem to bat an eye. Instead, they criticized the FBI for bullying the former president. No matter what he says or does, his followers continue on brandishing Trump flags, stickers, and t-shirts everywhere they go. Some have even created stores or restaurants dedicated solely to him, and their commitment is so strong that many were convinced that he would magically appear as president in 2021. The MAGA followers are something like we've never seen before in American politics. The pageantry of them, the violence, and their willingness to quite literally follow their leader into battle have raised quite a few questions. One of the biggest is, hey, is this a cult? Well, we've got a charismatic leader, conspiracy theories, followers unable to listen to others' opinions or even facts, and of course, undying loyalty. And to a lot of people, that sounds like the literal recipe for a cult. But a political cult as big as this? That can't be true, can it? Well, today we're going to try and find out. Is MAGA or Trumpism just a group of incredibly loyal followers or is it something much scarier? Is it really a cult? Hello and welcome to Dark Dives. I'm the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about the cult of MAGA or Trumpism. Now, I'm going to try my best to be as in-depth as possible. Sources today will include books, interviews, studies, the works. But as Stephen Hassan, the writer of The Trump of Cult, a leading cult expert explains how the president uses mind control rights in his preface, when writing about another person, there was always a certain amount of subjectivity and many opportunities for bias to slip in. But with that being said, let's go and buckle up kiddos, though I hope there are literally no kids actually watching today's episode or really any of my content. Since 2016, when Donald Trump surprised the world by actually becoming the president of the United States, people have been claiming that he had created, whether intentionally or not, a cult. Through the years and through all that has happened, such as the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, the insurrection of January 6th, et cetera, et cetera, that opinion has only grown, but how true is it? For experts, there is a divide on the question, mostly in one of two ways. For Stephen Hassan and some others, Trumpism has literally become a cult, ripe with brainwashing and a need for deprogramming of the followers. For others, Trumpism is more of a cult of personality. This isn't quite as terrifying to think about, but it is just as concerning when it comes to the supposed leader of the free world. So let's start with the less scary option, the cult of personality. What is this exactly? Well, the simple definition is an exaggerated devotion to a charismatic political, religious, or other leaders. Right off the bat, bells are probably ringing in your head. Trump's followers have a tendency to hang on to his every word, to wear everything Trump related they can get their hands on and worship him in a way that the world has never seen with any other politician, or at least in quite a while. I mean, for God's sake, there are even Trump themed restaurants, which are quite terrifying, might I add. It's hard to look at that and not think, there's nothing happening over there. Like this is totally normal. And when you dig a little deeper into what exactly makes a cult of personality, the concern certainly grows. As quoted in Very Well Mind, which sourced two scientific journals, leaders of cults of personality often use imagery and the manipulation of mass media to form an exalted, even superhuman version of their persona in the minds of their followers. And huh, doesn't that sound familiar? Especially if we look at what Trump recently did. Just a couple months ago, he decided to release the NFT Trump trading cards. And certainly this could be relatively harmless if it was just pictures of him as the president or whatever the hell, which weird, but harmless. But this is Donald Trump and that's not what happened. Instead, the cards which sold out depicted him in, what was that word I just said? Oh yeah, superhuman forms. 
One of them included him looking like Superman with lasers shooting out of his eyes. Others seem to show him as some special cowboy outfitted for either battle or hunting. I'm not really sure. Either way, they certainly were not normal pictures of Donald Trump. They were actually very poorly Photoshopped versions of himself. Like it was pretty shitty. And the fact that people bought this is embarrassing. A leader who portrays himself as superhuman, check. Ironically, the leader must also be one of us, superhuman, but a man of the people. Despite Trump's history and fame, he claimed that he's just one of his followers. Someone who was sick of the political climate and was just there to help. Someone who cared so much about blue collar workers and was trying to fix their problems. Was this the case? No, absolutely not. But he did try to appear that way. Then of course there was the big lie. This is the belief that Donald Trump had actually won the election that he very clearly lost. His followers obviously believed him. And for a cult of personality to survive, charismatic leaders as they're called can't look weak. That ruins the superhuman illusion. But they also need to be a victim. Trump was supposedly the victim of the biggest scandal in American history, at least, you know, according to him. If he had just turned over the presidency, this whole cult idea probably would have died off right there but he didn't and it prevented his followers from having to think about the idea that this Superman leader lost, perpetuating the cult name for years to come. Now, just because I say personality cults are the least terrifying option doesn't mean it's still not wildly concerning. Pretty much every horrifying person in history from Mussolini to Adolf Hitler was considered to be the leader of cults of personality. While these are slightly easier to disband than your average cult like Nexium or the Moonies, what can come from them can still be just as tragic. While some believe that Trumpism is just a run of the mill authoritarian cult of personality, others believe that it's a little bit more serious than that. According to some, MAGA has become a bona fide cult, complete with brainwashing and all. Dr. Stephen Hassan was once a cult member. In fact, he was a leader in one of the biggest cults in the world, one which we've covered before, the Moonies. When he was finally deprogrammed, he dedicated his life to studying cults and helping deprogram their followers. When Donald Trump rose to power, he noticed some things that made him question what exactly was going on. Soon, he would have enough information to write an entire book and give a plethora of speeches on the cult of Trump. To him, MAGA and Trumpism is ripe with indoctrination and even brainwashing. Obviously, Trump is incredibly persuasive, but it goes a bit further than that. According to Stephen Hassan, Trump used brainwashing techniques, including repetition, storytelling, social proof, visualization, and more. And all of this seems pretty straightforward. We know the repetition of lock her up, build the wall, et cetera, et cetera. We've heard it over and over again, literally mind numbingly so. Donald Trump is and was an incredibly successful storyteller that used visualization often. The imagine if this happened was present in almost every speech. Of course, there were people that continued to espouse his stories. And if they were famous or trusted, like I don't know, literally everyone from Fox News, then it was more likely for people to believe it. There are way more steps, but I have a very good talk from Stephen Hassan and my sources. If you would like to look through them, it is absolutely worth it. He mentions a total of 12 brainwashing techniques. Each and every one was used by Trump. He explains the Trump cult as a destructive authoritarian cult, which he defines using what he calls a bite model. Each letter stands for something different. B is for behavioral control, I is for information control, T is for thought control, and finally E is for emotional control. So, hmm, behavior control, check. Donald Trump continually tells people what they need to do. Like, I don't know, prevent the 2020 presidential vote from taking place by showing up at the fucking Capitol. But what about information control? Donald Trump continuously warned about fake news, the kind that falls right into thought control too. If you're telling people they can't believe literal facts or any type of news source other than the ones you believe in, then you're pretty much controlling the way they're going to think. And what about emotional control? Let's see here. Oh yes, convincing people they were doomed and only he could save them. Check again, that's interesting. But if we go off of everything Stephen Hassan says, then yes, it absolutely does seem like a cult. But some people do say that his brainwashing theory might be a little too far. You see, if we admit that Trumpism and make America great again and this whole Trumpy wumpy shit is a cult, then we actually have to absolve a lot of people from full responsibility. And that itself can be difficult for people to swallow. Still, we've talked about Trump and the theory of his cult, but there is one important aspect that we're missing, the followers. (laughs) 
We can't talk about this whole theory without mentioning the people that would make it possible, Trump's followers. First off, what has to be going on with the followers for it to be considered a cult? Well, let's talk about that. Cult education gives 10 warning signs that people are involved with an unsafe group or leader. Clearly, we're not going to go through all of them, but let's go through some of them as it relates to MAGA. One warning sign is categorizing any criticism of the group as persecution, and that's very interesting. Just a quick little Google search brings me to the National Review with a headline that reads, Trump blasts Mar-a-Lago raid as demented persecution of himself and his supporters. Another ethnographic study, meaning they talked, lived, worked with multiple people for an extended period of time, also brought forth this idea, with many people saying that the Democrats had attacked Trump and were intentionally dividing the country. But okay, 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 that's just one. Let's keep going. This one says, hyperactivity centered on the group leader agenda, which seems to supersede any personal goals or individual interests. Well, that one's kind of easy. We can look to January 6th for that one. When some people are asked why they stormed the Capitol or what they were doing there, they just said for Trump. Some didn't even take a moment to think what was going on in this premeditated decision and what that would mean for their personal lives. They just knew what they had been told. Donald Trump had the election stolen from him and it was their job to make that fact known to the world. If we want to keep going, we can also bring up COVID-19. Donald Trump said masks were stupid, harmful, or ineffective, and the most loyal of his followers obviously listened. He said the vaccine was dangerous, and again, they listened. Even if they were high risk, even if it was risky not to get a vaccine during, you know, a fucking pandemic, they listened, all because it fit the agenda. When the pandemic first started, it primarily impacted Democrat-run areas. As of March, 2022, the leading counties for COVID-19 are pro-Trump. This is the definition of working against your best interests but let's just do one more for the fun of it. This one says, anything the group leader does can be justified no matter how harsh or harmful. Now I won't beat the dead horse here and say January 6th again. So let's take a look at Charlottesville instead. During the protest with lots of quotation marks around it, one person was killed and others were injured when a car drove through a crowd, but the backlash was almost non-existent. Trump even famously said that there were good people on both sides to which people seem to nod their heads in agreement. If you wanna take a look at the list and let me know what you think, please do, because I could go on for days, but we do have to get moving on for the time being. But just matching three of the warning signs is kind of a cause for concern. Can we all agree to that, generally speaking? Still, I'm obviously not saying that everyone ever who has ever supported Trump fits into these categories or even fits into the whole theory. We're just talking about the most loyal of the MAGA folks. Those loyal followers who have no access to lawyers, advisors, or anyone else who they trust to differentiate between misinformation and what is you know, thrown in their way and what's the truth. Sometimes this means they're thrust into a dystopian world of disinformation with no hope of return. In fact, studies have shown that Trump's followers have an overwhelming tendency to lean on anything Trump says, regardless of opposing viewpoints. Completed by multiple professors from Michigan and Washington, the study called Seeking Evidence of the MAGA Cult and Trump Derangement Syndrome, an Examination of Asymmetric Political Bias, it found that Trump supporters continually showed bias towards Trump's positions, even when the opposing information was anonymous. The detractors of Donald Trump didn't show the same bias. So sure, we could assume that everyone who decided to join this supposed MAGA cult was the worst of the worst, the racists, the homophobes, etc. But that's not exactly what happened. Obviously, Trump did serve as a place for people who were already angry at marginalized groups to find solace and peace. But it was also a place where desperate people turned after being made to believe that their lives would never improve unless they followed Trump. As a former cult member named Daniel Barbin Levin told Salon, nobody joins a cult. They join a group of friends or they join a self-help group or whatever it is. And by the time you realize you're in a cult, you're often so enmeshed, it's hard to escape. So this brings us to an uncomfortable truth. If we are truly saying that MAGA or Trumpism is a cult, then we need to treat it as such, as difficult as that may sound. That means deprogramming, which takes persistence, empathy, and a lot of understanding. If we are going to act like people have been brainwashed, then we need to treat them that way, which according to Stephen Hassan is truly the only hope. Deprogramming means bringing people out of the constant bombardment of media intervention and bringing them back to the reality. It means being empathetic to the people who had fallen for the lies and the theatrics. And if we're going to treat it as a cult, we have to react to the people within the same way we would with any other cult. And of course, I know it's not that simple. This is a group that has an outrageous amount of power and a group that has undoubtedly harmed more people than we'll likely ever know. So forgiveness and empathy seemed like a wild ask for many of us. 
If we are trying to head down that path and understand why someone would join what is theorized to likely be one of the biggest cults in history, it's first important to understand how the fuck this even happened. One day, Donald Trump was a reality TV star with a massive variety of tricks, scams, and debt following him into every situation. And then in the next, he was one of the most powerful men in the world with a following that pledged their undying love and support regardless of what he said and did. So how does something like that happen? Uh, Today's first sponsor is me. Hello, hi, it is Blair, the same person you've been listening to this whole time. Uh, I just wanna let you know that I have a merch shop, multi-level merch dot shop. Feel free to check it out. We donate a portion of the proceeds every single month to a different charity. And since this month is January and it's my birthday month, I would like to donate to a charity that holds a particular place in my heart. Did you know that one in five adults and one in six youth experience mental illness issues every year and 50% of those individuals never seek help for it? And sometimes not seeking that help can lead to some really catastrophic events and I've lost many friends that way. So for the month of January, the merch shop is gonna be donating to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention or AFSP. A lot of the funding for AFSP goes into maintaining and running the 988 crisis phone response system. And to me, donating a little bit in order to keep that line open in the hopes that it would help somebody else in the future or even you know, right now or tonight or wherever, that's really all I need. So that's what I'm donating to this month for the merch shop. So if you purchase any merch from the shop, portions of the, um, of the merch order will go to uh, them to be donated. Today's episode is also sponsored by Factor Meals because this new year you've got goals and Factor is here to help you achieve each and every one of them. Save time and have the energy you need to tackle everything on your to-do list with Factor's ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. Get Factor and not only skip a trip to the grocery store, but skip chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. And meals are ready in as little as two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. And it doesn't matter what your lifestyle is, Factor has the meals to help you live it to the fullest with keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus on the menu every single week. Plus you can round out your meals and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 36 quick bites, smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add-ons. I've been using Factor long before they ever sponsored the channel. And I've got to tell you one of my favorite things from them, I think it's called the Jalapeno Popper Burger. It is literally one of the best things on their menus ever. And every time I see it pop up, I'm like immediate order, like every time. Like sometimes that's the only thing in my orders, like three of them, it's amazing. So head over to factormeals.com slash darkdive60 and use code darkdive60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code darkdive60 at factormeals.com slash darkdive60 to get 60% off your first box. It's a lot of 60s. Whether we look at Trump's following as a cult cult or simply a cult of personality, one thing is for certain. The United States has never seen anything like him. The rise to power, the following, and the unwillingness of his followers to listen to any outside facts are honestly unparalleled. It seemed to happen in almost the blink of an eye, but how? How did this happen? How did a reality star gain such a loyal following that researchers, journalists, and everyday average citizens seem to constantly compare to a cult? Well. Let me try to explain. We've already talked a little bit about what someone needs to start a cult. You need the media, an undeniable authority, and of course, charisma. It doesn't hurt if you can compare yourself to some sort of higher being. Donald Trump meets every requirement, but first things first, the media, Trump's favorite resource. Since his rise to power, Donald Trump used the media, particularly Twitter, to skew the public view in his direction. Some have called him the most successful propagandist of the early 21st century. He tweeted an astonishing 120 times a day and did so carefully. While it may have seemed like mayhem at the time, it wasn't really. He reveled in the power he had within his Twitter fingers and used it to threaten people who spoke out against him. At a White House press conference with conservative social media stars, he bragged about his power saying, boom, I press it and within two seconds, we have breaking news. More than half of his tweets were attacks against other people, mostly Democrats. With every new tweet, his followers hung on his every word, becoming more impassioned and more enthralled by their outspoken leader. He used the media carefully and fell back on yet another aspect of the cult of personality in multiple circumstances. A leader legitimizes his authority through media manipulation and propaganda that causes followers to believe the leader is the only one who can achieve a stated mission. Trump's beginning was the rise of the fake news outcries. He continually attacked the media and told everyone that he was the only one telling them the truth. Even when the evidence directly contradicted him, he persisted. 
not only was he the only one who could tell the truth, but evidently, he was also the only one who could save America. In his Republican speech, Donald Trump loudly claimed that nobody knows the system better than me, which is why I alone can fix it. I am your voice. Just one line, which most would probably think portrayed sheer arrogance coming from someone who had never been in politics before, solidified his followers' trust. This was it, the person that could save them. While some news sources were saying it was silly or difficult to take seriously, others were leaning in. Particularly, the ones who were looking for a hero in a world that was rapidly changing before their eyes and in their perception, leaving them behind. Even if he wasn't the one saying it, the message was getting through. Sarah Huckabee Sanders even claimed that God himself had sent Trump to be president. This is what God wanted, and how could you argue with God? Some of his followers certainly joined in after hearing a man spout similar ideas as them. Others came fully on board at the promise that he could help them more than anyone else before. His rallies embodied the politics of hope as Scientific American put it. They were specifically designed to embolden the followers and ensure them that this was their leader, the person that they had to follow. Each one started hours before Trump's arrival with people waiting for the spectacle to begin. As they sat for hours, they were convinced that this must be worth it. I mean, if thousands of people were willing to sit and wait for a long time for someone to arrive, this must be an important person. And everyone was there together, which made it seem like a movement rather than a political speech. So with each rally, devotion grew. And this isn't new. Everyone in politics has held massive rallies with huge crowds, but the Trump rallies were a little different. It was more of a spectacle of Trump than a political speech. Protesters were caught throughout the crowd when the followers began to scream, Trump, 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 as a strategy that was instructed by security before the event began. The politics of hope emerged in every aspect of his speeches. The country was in trouble and only he could save it. Of course, we all remember the wall to supposedly help with crime. Then there was a promise of jobs. As he spoke, he inflated the unemployment statistics to 18 to 20% and blamed China and Mexico for having all of our jobs. But don't worry, he promised, he was going to fix that too. For people who were struggling, who may have felt disenfranchised or who were hurting economically, these rallies were a breath of fresh air. He consistently promised to be someone different. Again, someone almost superhuman. There's no wonder why so many people would put their faith in him, especially when he was simultaneously slashing the trust in every other major political figure as he made promises. Looking back, it's not hard to see how Trump came to power or how he gained the loyalty of so many people. But at the time, he was seen as a joke. Hopefully we don't make that mistake again as the post-Trump era continues to wage on. The undying loyalty doesn't just end with him, it continues. And without a doubt, we see it in politics today, three years after his loss of power. Since losing the election and sorry babes, he did lose, Donald Trump certainly has not disappeared from the media. He was raided at Mar-a-Lago and again played the victim. He releases presidential statements and his influence in politics can still be seen. According to some new research, his favorability in the GOP seems to be going down. Hell, even Liz Cheney, who isn't exactly known for being the kindest, most level-headed politician has turned against him and alleged the cult of personality remarks. But this doesn't mean his influence has completely disappeared. It certainly doesn't mean that people have lost their willingness to do his bidding. Take Steve Bannon, for example. I'm sure we all remember him. The man who looks like a zombie and spouts racism seemingly every chance he gets. Despite his death-like appearance, he holds some influence of his own. And while his exit from the White House was certainly controversial, he still seems to stand two feet behind his leader. Steve Bannon has not been shy about his intention to completely reshape the Republican party. And he continually uses Trump's following and his name in his attempt to do so. Even after the fired strategist was arrested, he released a statement that read, "'They are coming after all of us, "'not only President Trump and myself. "'I am never going to stop fighting.'" According to him, there is a global attack on MAGA and he knows just how to win it. Introducing the precinct strategy. Originally, the strategy was developed by Dan Schultz, an Arizona lawyer turned Oath Keeper who wanted the militia group to own the GOP. Keep in mind, the Oath Keepers are the same group of people who were charged with seditious conspiracy after the insurrection. So yeah, without even knowing what exactly the strategy is, it sounds shady as hell. So when you add Steve Bannon into the mix, you just know it's about to get worse. So what exactly is the precinct strategy? Basically, the idea of the strategy is for MAGA supporters, followers, and like-minded politicians to take the GOP from the bottom up. It urges people to sign up to be precinct officers all over the country. 
Individually, precinct officers don't have an outrageous amount of power. It's just an average job, the worker bees who make the calls and knock on doors. But if thousands upon thousands of people from the same group all sign up for the same job, then they can have some major political pull. In some states within the country, they even choose the poll workers. And in some states, they choose the people that literally oversee elections. Given the undying loyalty to Trump, the commonly held belief that every election is rigged, unless they win, of course, and the massive following, if they were to accomplish this strategy, it could very well change everything. And they know this. Of course, Donald Trump supports it, which given everything we just learned, we can assume that this idea is just that much stronger. The same old messaging Trump used is right there in the middle of the strategy, saying that it's the only way to save the Republic and prevent voter fraud. Same song, different station. That's all that's happening. But of course, we all know that this isn't the only thing left over from the Trump presidency and the cult following that he developed. Politics has been vastly changed and there is no time we have seen that more clearly than during the recent election for Speaker of the House. The chaos and undeniable circus was something that the country hasn't seen the likes of in over 100 years. And it was all being orchestrated by some of Trump's former most loyal followers, Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert. Only something interesting happened. When Trump himself attempted to use his overwhelming influence over the people who seemed to be sworn to follow him and to cut the bullshit, they didn't listen. Maybe this is a sign that his influence is shrinking or maybe more terrifying, this is a sign that his influence has been overgrown. I guess we'll have to wait and see which one is true. Over the past year, studies have shown that the support for Trump is slowly shrinking away in the GOP. But with his recent announcement of his candidacy in the 2024 presidential election, we might just be starting this whole conversation over again. Whether you believe that Trumpism or MAGA is a cult or just an unsettling political power move, you have to admit that the whole phenomenon is interesting and eerily similar to some things we would much rather keep in the past. But ultimately, I'll leave that up for you to decide. Obviously, there is so much information that can still be added to the story, but we would literally be here for hours, days, if not weeks. But after everything that we've seen, everything you've heard, and all that you know, what do you think? Is MAGA a cult? And with all of that being said, that is where we're going to end today's episode of Dark Dives. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. I do hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date to the latest episodes. Thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.